What's up guys, how you all doing? And welcome to another video. Hey, today we're gonna to be checking out how to build a simple web scraper. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a way of pulling data out of web pages, uh, good old just regular HTTP web pages. If that sounds like something that interests you, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay, guys, so as the intro said, we're going to be looking at how to pull data out of HTTP web pages or basically just out of a web page. Um, we're going to be looking at how to do this with Visual Studio. You could use the Visual Studio code, I believe. That's another uh, open source uh thing that's out there. I'm just going to be using Visual Studio Community uh, 2017. Yeah, I know I haven't updated it yet, but there's a lot of stuff I have installed on that and I don't really want to update it just yet and break everything. So we're going to be doing that. Now, what we're going to be doing is this is kind of an add-on to one of our previous videos, which is the video about how to add Ethernet to your Arduino projects and be able to serve up the data that's in your Arduino to a web page. Well, now what we're going to do, and I'll leave a link to that somewhere. I'll probably put it up card or something for that video if you haven't seen that already so that way you'll be up to speed on what we're doing so now let's say you've gotten your ethernet added you've gotten it uh posted uh where it's on a web page like as you see here here's all the data here it's updating in uh near real time here every five seconds or so but you would like to have some sort of external application that will pay attention to this website and will pull the data out of this web page. That's what we're going to look at today. So what we're going to look at is pulling this data, these values, as well as maybe this channel, uh, these channels that are here. We're going to pull that data out of here and uh, just basically display it. Something very simple. So once you've installed community, you should be good to go. So Starting from that standpoint, we're going to go up to file and we're going to grab a new project. You want a Windows Forms application, okay? So that's why if this does not show up, if you don't have this, then you need to go to the uh, installation uh, package and make sure you select the .NET framework. Give it a name, tell it a place to store it, and then boom, you should have a Windows Form application. And it will look something similar to this when it comes up. You'll just have a simple form. Now, what I have done on this form is I have thrown on there two labels. Um, I probably should have made those look a little more defined. There we go. So I labeled this one uh, LBL channel. So this is going to store our channels. And then uh, went down here to auto size and I turned the auto size off and it comes on by default and it'll shrink up the box. So I turned it off and then uh, any of the text that was in it, I think there's a, there's a text property in here. I just cleared it out. You don't need anything in there. Yeah. Text and just cleared it out. I did that for both of these. The second one, I called it LBL value. That's all I did to set up the form. So now I just, if you just double click on the form, it will take you into the forms, uh, basically load sections. So what we'd want to do is down here and see that's where we want is the form load object. We're going to run these few different things. Now we need this HTTP. ML agility pack. Okay. Now this does not come standard with it. We'll have to install it. So to do that, come up here and hit tools and come down to this NuGet package manager. So we're going to click on that. That's going to bring up <clears throat> the package manager. And up here in the search field, we're going to do the HTML. In fact, there it is. HTML agility pack. There it is. So the first one that's up here, HTML agility pack. All right. You're going to come over here. You're going to check the box that says project and it automatically checks the web scraper. That's fine. That's what we're going to be building is a web scraper. So that's exactly what we want. And of course I already have mine installed, but you'll just hit this install button. That's it. And it'll add it to your project. Once you're done with that, close it out. And then we come in to our form. So the first thing we want to do is <clears throat> we want to get a new HTML web, web uh, item from uh, the agility pack. So we're going to create that here. So we do the HT, HTML agility pack dot HTML web and we create a new uh, HTML web basically link that we're going to use. And to that, we're also going to create a new document, an HTML document where we can actually store what we go fetch. Um, from the web. We're going to store that in that. So we're going to create that. And then we're going to also go ahead and assign it to web.load. And so we're going to take our, our web 
uh, handle, I guess you'd say. I, I don't know the actual name of it, forgive me. This is the first time I mess with this, but the web handle, and we're going to do a load. And then inside this load command, we're going to give it the IP address. And you de definitely have to make sure it's the, got the HTTP in front of it and everything that does matter. Um, but you grab that. All I did was, was I just grabbed it from uh, Chrome. You know, just go up here and just copy and paste that in, and then you're good to go. And then uh, that way it knows where we're, what page we're loading to scrape, essentially, okay? Now is where it gets a little bit complicated. So now we're going to build a for each, so that way as we scrape this, we're going to go through each item that it finds. And in order to pluck out the data, we're going to use what's called a uh, X path, which is basically kind of like if any of you have ever used uh, uh, regular expressions, it's kind of like that. Not really, but but sort of. It's, it's a filtering is what you're going to want to do. And so how we do this, let me move this off to the side. How you figure out your filter, there's a couple different ways to do this. One thing that I like to play with is a testing uh, software, which we'll get to here in a minute, um, to play around with it and see if, if you're parsing correctly and things like that. Another way to do that is if you go over here and like I said, you hit F12. So over here, hit F12. It's going to bring up this like inspection thing. Now we can go ahead and expand all of it so that way we can see all the different components and pieces of everything. A good way to start playing with the filtering is hit control while you're in this field, hit control F. It's going to bring up your find. Now, what we want is we want these pieces, right? We want each one of these little data pieces. And you can see that highlight over here. That's what we're wanting. We're running the channels and we're wanting the, the, you know, the values that are in those channels. So in order to do this, and that's why it's important that you put these headings in. If you just throw a table in there uh, without any of those headings, it makes parsing it not impossible, but it just makes it more difficult. It's it's easier if it's got the headings uh, in there. These 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 table and bodies and and you have these little align or I mean class equals whatever because that's what we're going to use to parse it with. Okay. So now to begin our parsing, of course it reset on me is a great way to do that is you're going to come down here and what we're looking for is we want these pieces. So this is why it's nice that you put these class uh, headings in here because you can parse based on that. And how we do that is we're going to do slash slash, which stands for root. That stands for like, like it, we, we're starting, we're starting at the beginning of this file is what we're doing. And then what we're going to search for is the TD headings. Okay. So we're going to look for those data headings. Now you could stop there but the problem is, is if we search for only TD headings, we're going to get both the channel and the value as the return. We only want to grab one at a time because we probably have separate variables, or in our case, we have separate labels to put it all in. So we're going to go a step further just to make sure we filter out uh, uh, only the channels. And we're going to do an open bracket. We're going to do an at class, okay, equals. And then we're going to say when the class is also equal to uh, Chan, which is our header, and then we're going to close bracket that. So now it's going to find the channel ones and only the channel ones. So we can actually do that by flipping through here, and you can do the up and down, and it only catches those. Whereas if we did it the other way, as you can see, it has 12. It's going to go through each and every one, so it's going to return both of them. Well, we don't want it to return both of them, and you'll see why here in a minute. We want this to be at class equals, and we're going to do it again, channel. Now, you would do the same thing for the value. As we do that, you're just going to change this chan to value, and now it should select the value ones, and if we flip through, it's going to select the value ones, and that's what we want to parse out, okay? So back to Visual Studio. So how we're going to do this is we basically put that in right here. You're going to do a for each because we're just going to loop through all the items that uh, this searching thing returns. So we're just going to create a simple variable. We're going to call it item. You can call it channel or just whatever. Um, we're going to do our call our doc uh, identifier here dot document node dot select node. So you're going to select each one of the nodes that it returns. And of course we got to give it what to search for, and that's your parsing statement here or your X path. And we've got channel here. And then <clears throat> what we're going to do, and of course, as you can see, you can look ahead, you've got the value down here. So we have a couple of four, four eaches. And then all we do simple, simple enough is we just take our LBL channel dot text and we add uh, our item, you know, which is our little dot inner text. 
And then we, of course, I give it a, a axis in so that way it does it like in a column. Um, and we do that for the value one as well. That's pretty much it. You could, you now you could attach this, you could make this instead of being in a text box where you could put this in an array or you could put, you know, you basically put it in anything. You know, it's kind of however you want to mess with the data, but this is how you get it. So let's go ahead and start this. And there we go. There's all of our data. So if I, well, wait, hold on. There it is. There is all of our data. So there it is. So 0306. Of course, I think it updated since I grabbed it, but basically there's, there's all of your stuff. Now you could put this on a timer uh, to where it runs every so often and refreshes all the time. So that way it's pulling new data, but you know, I'll leave that to you guys to figure out how to run the timers and whatnot. Okay. <clears throat> so that's basically in a nutshell, how you parse the data from a web page. Well, thank you so much for watching. That should probably be about it for today. Definitely make sure you check out, check out the merch, you know, down below, we even have hats. Uh, this is my Kansas city chiefs hat, but we do have, uh, I believe hats. We even have masks. Yes, that's right. We live in this strange time, but we even have the engineered masks. So definitely go check out the merch store. Also check out the Tindy store. We got new scam aways. They are finally back in stock. So definitely check those out. If you hate robocalls and you don't like the scammers, definitely check out the scam away down there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.